Virgin Atlantic versus British Airways. They've been duking it out for decades over the pond, but who has the better business class? Well, I flew both airlines in their newest and best offering back to back to find out who earns the title Britain's Best Business Class. Hello, Jet Setters. We're about to board Virgin Atlantic across the Atlantic. And we're also about to board British Airways across the Atlantic. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Let's see how these two fierce rivals do head to head in business class. Here's the plan. First, we'll fly with Virgin Atlantic in their new upper class from New York to London. Then, we'll fly back with British Airways in their latest club suite. We'll compare the two using the Jeb score and name a winner. But go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Who do you think is going to come out on top? Let's get into it. First up, Virgin Atlantic upper class from New York to London. Today's flight will be on board Virgin's flagship A350-1000. This is a morning flight. That's a relative rarity for flights from the US to Europe, but I really wanted to make these two flights as equivalent as possible, so they're both during the day. The Virgin Clubhouse is about a 10 minute walk to the gate. They'll make an announcement before it's time, but I think it makes perfect sense to head there first before we can start this flight across the Atlantic. Upper class passengers are also able to use the Delta Sky Club, which is much closer, but where's the fun in that? This lounge is spectacular. It lives up to the name Clubhouse and truly feels like a place you'd want to spend a lot of time in. There's tons to look at and even more to do. And that was a good thing this morning because there was nothing to see thanks to the condensation in the windows. I grabbed a seat and before I could place my order for breakfast using the QR code and website, a team member came up and asked what I'd like. I opted for a cup of coffee and the Eggs Benedict. Both were really good. This is some seriously good food for a business class lounge and having table service, well, that's always a treat. That said, there's no buffet in here. You can only order from the menu. I watched the Air India arrival through the window and ordered another cup of coffee using the app. It arrived fairly quickly. Fully caffeinated, I made my way back over to gate B27, again, a 10 minute walk away from the club. Our flight was on time and boarding began shortly after I arrived at the gate. Don't you wish more gates allowed for sweeping views of the airplane like this? Anyway, you enter into the airplane through a lounge area before being directed to your seat. Now this space really makes the plane feel more welcoming than when you walk into a galley on other aircraft. The suite embraces the virgin vibe. The color scheme is just downright cool. It's a really good looking space. But I couldn't help but wonder, how would it feel after a nearly six hour transatlantic trip? And more importantly, how will it compare to British Airways? Above, you'll find air vents and a reading light. You'll have access to headphones, some storage, and a socket here. The seats are, of course, adjustable. There's a menu, a paper amenity kit, and a can of water here. There's an armrest located here. Flight attendants offered a mimosa, I toasted you, and the captain delivered what I can only describe as a poem. I welcome you all aboard Virgin Atlantic's big silver bird of freedom. Our destination, of course, is London Heathrow in our flight time today, five and three quarter hours. We'll pass great cities, endless wilderness, peoples and their nations, all at icy altitudes, and much of it through our blue yonder. So now let us away from New York. Let us transport you. And let us all, one small share, the miracle of flight. If that doesn't get you in the mood for a transatlantic flight, nothing will. We put New York in our rear view mirror and soon had the United Kingdom in our windscreen. The tray table is sturdy and comes out over here. It took me most of the flight before I found out, thanks to a helpful flight attendant, that it was possible to actually pull it out and bring it closer to me. I've never claimed to be the brightest bulb. Wi-Fi was available for a fee, 21 pounds for the whole flight. It was fast enough for what I needed to do. The IFE is reminiscent of Austrians in that the screen is really shiny. If my window was open, it was impossible to check it out without checking myself out too. There were plenty of choices and a great map. Again, the amenity kit is paper, which emphasized recycling over reuse. It had the basics. I'm always happy to see a pen on a flight though. 
This was a morning flight, so the first meal was breakfast. And service was slow to start. It took an hour before flight attendants began serving. I requested the California omelet with the muesli, but unfortunately they'd run out of the muesli. The omelet was really quite good. If you're traveling with someone, these suites can be a bit confining, but that's not really a problem because you can head out to the lounge area. There's no bar here now, but the flight attendants won't leave you waiting for long if you're having a seat out here. Bedding, including a mattress cover, is available, and in its fully flat position, this seat is quite nice. I was really comfortable. The footwell is a little cramped, but not too bad. And there was plenty of shoulder space up top. I'm 5 feet 11 inches tall and was really comfortable here. For the next few hours, I watched some content and wondered how British Airways would fare. The time flew by, and about 90 minutes before we touched down, we received a pre-landing meal. I started with the tomatoes, mozzarella, and pesto. It was just as fresh as if it had come out of a chef's kitchen moments before. I then had the salmon louis salad, which was also really good. There was a bit of spice to it, but not too much. And I finished off with a piece of cheesecake. This was one of the most interesting meals I can remember having on a plane. Really delicious. Maybe the best part of the in-flight entertainment, though, is this tail-mounted camera. The bar has been set pretty high. I mean, this was a really great flight. But now, it's time to put British Airways to the test. Keep watching to see how Virgin's arch-rival does with the same city pair. British Airways calls Terminal 5 home here at London's Heathrow. It was full of people. Thankfully, I wasn't checking a bag, so I got through pretty quickly. Some of you may say it's unfair to start one of these journeys in New York and the other in London, but the fact of the matter is both airlines have spent millions of dollars to create parity across these two cities, so I'm going to disagree with you. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I made my way up a couple of escalators, past this famous horse lamp or lamp horse. I really don't know what this thing is, but I went to the lounge. It's massive, which was good because it was also filled with people. Finding a spot to sit was not easy, but eventually I found a place. I made myself a cup of coffee, and despite signs and announcements advertising a service to have food delivered to my seat, I could not get it to work. So instead, I visited the buffet. It was filled with the basics, including the makings for a breakfast sandwich. It's time to get on board. My flight on board a Boeing 777 was scheduled to leave from the B gates, which involved a short train ride and a bit of a hike. It's so good to see British Airways A380s operating again. And here's the bird that'll take me back to New York today. Boarding began on time, and I started a circuitous walk to the airplane. British Airways chose a fitting and restrained color scheme for this cabin. The suite looks substantial. On the seat, I found a pillow and bedding. You can tell a lot about both of these airlines just by comparing the color schemes of these two cabins, can't you? There's a lot of storage here. In here, you'll find a universal socket, USB, headphone jack, and a remote control. The screen is large and the tray table is sturdy and well-placed. There are no air vents here. My backpack fit nicely in here and I was able to keep it stowed there during taxi, takeoff, cruise, and landing. Back on the Virgin flight, it had to be put in an overhead bin during taxi, takeoff, and landing. Flight attendants offered a glass of champagne to toast our departure and our pilot offered a welcome. I think we can all agree that the Virgin Atlantic pilot wins the award for the most epic announcement of this trip. But we bid a fond farewell to Heathrow and began the journey back to JFK. The in-flight entertainment was excellent. The map was solid and there were loads of choices. Wi-Fi was available for just under 15 pounds for the whole trip and it was really fast. There's a door here too if you'd like a little more privacy. There is just so much room in this suite. It's easy to spread out, get work done, make yourself comfortable here. 
The amenity kit by The White Company is nice and contains what you'd expect for a business class flight like this. As with Virgin, it's nice to have a pen, but maybe call me demanding. I wish it said British Airways on it. Service was slow, with uh, drinks orders taken an hour after departure. I started with a gin and tonic. How great is this glass? And 45 minutes later, that's an hour and 45 minutes after departure, it was time for lunch. I had the lamb shank and a glass of the French red wine. Both were really good. The sweet potatoes were the highlight for me, though. I rarely show lavatories in my videos because there's not much to see there. But I want to make a note about this. There just didn't seem to be enough of them in this cabin for this number of people. They were nearly always full, so finding space was a bit of a challenge. In its fully flat position, this bed was quite comfortable, and although I don't think doors are necessary, having one here made the space feel a little bit more private. The footwell was plenty big enough, and I even had enough room around my shoulders. And 90 minutes before landing, it was time for afternoon tea. The sandwiches were nice and akin to what I'd expect for a pre-landing meal on most airlines in business class, especially following a massive lunch like we'd had earlier. So let's use the unscientific Jeb score to rate these flights. We'll look at both using the five-star scale across five factors to name Britain's best business class. We'll consider the lounge, the seat, the in-flight entertainment, the food, and the service. First, the lounge. Well, let's face it, Virgin's Lounge in New York was just a lot more interesting. Sure, there weren't as many people using it as there were in the British Airways Lounge in London, but it's still just plain cool. Virgin takes the cake here. The seats were both fantastic, but the edge for me goes to British Airways. That extra storage is nice, the tray table was better, and the ability to keep my backpack with me during the entire flight, that's a real highlight for me. In-flight entertainment, well, it's basically a tie. They both had plenty of choices, and although Virgin's screen was reflective, that didn't bother me too much when my window shade was down. The food award goes to Virgin Atlantic. Even though they ran out of the muesli I wanted, the flavors were just more interesting, and yeah, lamb is nice, my favorite meat, in fact. It's just uh, not quite as adventurous as the Virgin menu. Finally, the service. Both were slow to start, but the winner is Virgin here. Unfortunately, British Airways service felt a little like a, a conveyor belt, while Virgin Atlantic just felt extremely personal. Several of the Virgin Atlantic flight attendants stopped and had meaningful conversations with me. I rarely exchanged more than one or two words with a BA cabin crew, including what I wanted for lunch. So that means the winner of this British Battle Royale is Virgin Atlantic, with 24 out of 25 possible stars. Between now and the next time, See in the sky.